These are about two and a half inches. They work great. Um, they catch a wide range of different fish from trout to saltwater. These work really well. This is McFly Angler. starts now all right guys so we're going to start placing the hook in the vise and by the way the hooks i'm using that i always use for these is the sl12 from gamagatsu make sure it's the the s the short okay because otherwise it's too long of a shank but i'm i, I use a size four for the mini another one that you could use is this um, the sc15 now <laughs> this is size one, which actually ends up being the same gap, if you look. Roughly the same gap. Maybe a little bit wider. You could probably use a two. But that's what I use. Now the shank is slightly longer. But the difference between these two is this is a thicker shank that's a little stronger. However, of course, penetration on the hook set is going to be a little bit... Um, a little bit less with this uh, you got to set a little harder and this is going to be a little thinner of a um, wire gauge basically so it's gonna it's gonna hook set a little better so if you're fishing a lighter rod something you know without a lot of stiffness to it uh, for instance if you're bass fishing and it's like a, a six weight but it's not like a really really stiff six weight or five weight or whatever i actually fish these with three weights sometimes and i'll always use this hook at that point um, if you can't get a good hook set then you know if you're not using a stiff rod you want to use something like this otherwise like salt water or you know you're fishing a a really stiff six weight or seven weight or eight weight you can use this so like all my game changers i always start the hook first and I'll make seven wraps, maybe eight, somewhere around there, seven to eight wraps. And this is a uh, lead free, 0 0.015 size lead free wire. Um, if you're going a little larger, so if you're going like a medium size, then you want to use like the 0 0.02, maybe 0 0.025. Okay, so then you push that back. And what we're doing here, is we're keeling this down we're making sure that this doesn't spin over because when you fast strip these sometimes they'll want to kind of spin sideways and they'll they'll come around like this you definitely don't want that you want it to keep upright so now actually <laughs> i'm going to tie these uh since i'm tying it in gray i'm going to use a gray thread but this is 140 uh, 140 power thread from vivas and I'm using the thicker one, not because of the strength, but because it covers this with less wraps. So it's a little quicker and easier. Okay, so come through. You just want to cover up the lead wraps. You come up and it's a flat thread. So what I'm doing right now is I'm spinning that bobbin counterclockwise. As you can see, it flattens out that thread a little. And then it covers just a little better it can fray a little bit but that'll be okay we're just gonna we're gonna put some super glue on it as you can see that's all covered pretty quickly there and then we're just gonna make a quick little whip finish it doesn't have to be really really strong whip finish you don't have to do like a four or five turn whip finish because we're gonna end up covering this anyway with more thread so just a little touch of super glue and then we set this aside. So I have a block of foam that I just set it on. As you can see here, 
And then I usually what I do is I tie these in batches, so I'll tie quite a few of them. Um, and uh, I'll just line that up, get those prepared, and then I'll start making the tails and make a whole bunch of those. All right, so next we are gonna put in a tail shank. These are quite small, okay? And that's what these are. Oh boy, it's gonna be hard to see in this <laughs> so close. Uh, the articulated microspine from fish skull. Okay, and they're just basically, you can see what they are. They just have a loop on the front here and then a place to actually set it into your vise. It just kind of bends down. Now, after you're done tying, you could always clip that off. I find it doesn't really matter. And since I'm tying this in multiple different colors, we'll just go ahead and um, I'm just using white thread, by the way, um, because all this will be covered up. As you know, I like using chickaboo for this, which is basically marabou, but in from a chicken. So really small marabou, little feathers. This time, since I'm tying a pink tail. So I want two of them. As you can see, I have them splayed out like this. You want them, you know, there's a little curve to the feather, so splay them outward. Um, you could also use just regular feathers, dubbing, whatever you want. It's no big deal. And so I wet it. Okay, and I like a fairly, on these, um, a little bit of a tail on it, so you can see it's not, it's not like one or two um, of these shanks, it's, it's about two and a half, three, okay, is where I'm going, that's one, two, yeah, almost three, okay, so that's about right there, but you want to, <laughs> want to start your thread first, when I film, guys, I forget things all right so we are going to start the thread like I said this is white thread all right so put a little thread base there right there that'll work somehow I feel like this got out of focus here when I bumped it All right, keep that right on top, and then bring it back down, make a couple tight turns, come back up. You could do that, and then snip it now, or um, what I like to do, okay, is actually snip it, get that measurement down how you want it, okay, and then snip it off the vise and that just makes a cleaner tie-in. And when you snip it, you want to do a little bit of an angle on the snip. It doesn't look like it right there, but I did put a little angle on it. All right, and then come in, tighten. Oh, now that can happen. Okay, it'll spin. That's okay. We'll fix that because we're going to put a little, little dot of super glue on that. Okay. Okay. So this is not necessary, but I like adding a little flash. I've got this Mirage flash already out, and I really like it actually with the with the pink. The Mirage flash, not a whole lot of brands carry the Mirage, and they're generally more expensive. So I mean, just regular pearl flashaboo would work just fine. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm taking one strand, I'm doubling it up. If you're going to tie like four or five of these in a row. You would do, it looks like one strand because I wet it, but you can see at the tip there, it's, uh, it's a double. Okay, so, and I like having this just slightly longer than the tail. So we're going to tie this in on one side. Ah, oh, that broke off. Let's, uh, <laughs> let's redo that. It's hard to see, guys, when I'm tying through a camera. 
lens. I'm not looking at my uh, my fly. All right, so slightly longer, and we're just going to come in, make a couple wraps, pull this around, and then make sure it's tied in right on the side like that. And we wrap this back around. It keeps breaking. I'm not sure what's going on here. But that's in on that side. I'm just going to do a second tie in on the other. Hmm. I've never had Mirage Flash do that to me. So if you could get that to wrap back around, you would just uh, clip it back here to the same length, but instead I just tied it in on the other side. Next, we are going to grab a feather. So we have one of these feathers. It's one of the smallest ones that you, I could find on the back part of the saddle. And I'll show you those saddles in just a minute. So what we're doing is we are Stripping off the fibers. I gotta do this off camera, guys. <laughs> A little harder to do it looking through the lens. All right, so we've got that. See, it's stripped off. That's all the feather we're gonna need. And then you just wanna pinch up by the tip and stroke back the fibers, okay? I'm gonna do that again off camera. So as you can see, I stroke back the fibers except for just the tip there. And I'm holding the tip. And then I'm just gonna trim this. So that way, I've got something to tie in. But it doesn't go over the, the hook eye. Okay, so that's uh, tied in. And then this type of hackle plier right here with that little plunger style kind of, we're going to grab the stem and then boy, there's about a inch and a half of space between the camera lens and this, so not a lot of room to work. Sorry guys if I'm bumping the camera. Hopefully it doesn't get out of focus. I want to try to get you in as close as I could. So anyway, we are stroking all the fibers rearward. with each wrap. I want to try not to capture any of the, the fibers, but we can fix that in a minute if you capture some. Sorry if my hands are right in the way. Alright, so it's just one. What I do is, I do that pink tail with this one. I mean, you can do any combo you want. You can just do a plain color if you want. You don't have to do a multicolor. You don't have to do different tail colors or anything like that. Um, however you want to do these, but these are pretty cool to have a multicolor. So once, once you get that tied in, you got a couple wraps, you pull tight here on the, the thread, and then you can just pop that right off. Um, and that gives it a nice clean break. And then we are going to whip finish. You don't need a crazy big whip finish. Four is good enough. I'm trying to do it in the camera. I missed and got it into the eye. But look, I'm just, it's actually good to show you guys. So if you ever have that happen, you can always just pinch it back. Make sure that whip finish is good. And luckily we have a little trick. If you 
Oh. If you don't have the best whip finish, that's okay. We're going to fix that because right now I'm coming in. This is Solarez Ultra Thin re Resin. Okay, the bone dry, they call it. it. Has a handy little paintbrush on it and just. Put the whole thing, the whole wet finish there with resin, and then you come in and cure it. And once you cure that, that hardens that up, and it'll kind of fix any mess up with your wet finish like I just had. And that's a pretty good wet finish now. That's not going to come loose. And to untrap the fibers, you can brush that out. And there we go, that's the tail section. And then what I would do is I'd tie, you know, however many of these while I'm, you know, tying more. I'm just doing one today, but usually I'll tie quite a few more. All right, guys, so I wanted to show you this. This is a hen saddle. It's a whiting red label hen saddle, okay? These aren't too expensive, and there's quite a few feathers on it. It's great for these type of flies. As you can see, the feathers are a little smaller up here, so you want to start you know, um, like the last one I used was up, up this way. And then down here are much wider, larger feathers that you'll want to use for the head. And these come in wide range of colors. This is a light gray. And then for the head, I've got this darker gray. Same exact thing. Now this is the, not the red label, it's very similar. Herbert Miner. Okay, so basically the same thing, except for Herbert, miners are natural. They're never dyed, I believe. That's the difference. They're just natural, different, you know, colors. And then the red label is uh, sometimes natural, sometimes dyed. This is natural, but um, they're very similar. Um, both should be about the same price as well. So either one would work if you find colors that you like. And I believe there's some other brands of feathers that you could get. Um, that would work for this. All right, guys, so next we're gonna put in one of these six millimeter shanks. Make sure that's in nice and tight. And that's what they are. They're the, again, the micro spine. This is a six millimeter shank, and it's a little different than the tail shank that they have. As you can see, it makes like a full loop. You wanna feel for that downward shank part right there. You wanna put that in so that's angled down. And then you just separate this, open that up, put that through. There we go, now you got the tail on the next shank. We're still using the six op thread. This Phoebus is quite strong, so you know, it's up to you if you wanna use something a little heavier, but I find this is good enough. And boy, I'm having trouble getting that started. There we go. All right, so then we're just gonna wrap over all of that. Cut off the excess. And then this is angled down, so if you start tying tight right here, it's gonna jump down on you. So you wanna kinda taper that a little bit up. Right there. We're gonna go with a couple of the feathers from slightly further up, not much really close to the same the nice thing is you can you can do a couple different things so with these if you have two feathers that end up being you actually want to probably pull four because you're going to want to look at these because you're going to need two per section so you want to look at these okay so there's four different feathers you want to see which one is a little wider and these are a little wider okay and you want to pull them from close to the same section so you just aligning the tips of these okay and then for the first section you really want to make sure there's a nice taper okay so instead of pulling you don't need all of this feather right so we are going to come in and we're going to pull a little further up as you can see there's usable fiber right there the fuzzies don't start to about right there so we're going to pull off a little further up And that's what you're left with. And then we're going to grab the tip like before. And stroke those fibers down. 
Sorry, it's not in the camera. It's hard to do this. It's one of these really small flies here. The camera has to be so close. Now you're holding both of them. As you can see, there is two feathers in there, but I'm holding both. We're just going to do the same thing. We're going to cut off a little triangle section. So that way we can tie this in. it back up as far as you can and then right here there's that wire the end of the wire you can see right at the end there that gets sharp so you want to want to give a little slack and then just softly go over that so that way you don't pull tight it will break your thread if you pull too tight we're just going to grab the ends of both with the hackle pliers stroke all the fibers rearward and then we're just going to do the same thing, hackle this up. This can get a little mundane. Because you're just doing the same thing all the way up at this point. Now I might have too much fiber here. As you can see, I'm going to overdo this. So I'm going to strip off. Be careful doing this because you could break the stem. I'm going to strip off a little bit because I'm not going to need all that. I really should have stripped off a little more earlier. Since we're going with the double feather, a little more bulk it's creating quicker. So There we go. See that just came out just perfect right up to the edge. So capture the stem with a couple wraps, pull it rearward, pull that stem rearward, pull everything back, and then wrap back up onto that stem to really hold it into place. Oh, hitting the camera trying to do that. There we go. Alright, so then we're going to just make sure that stem's covered up. And then we're going to whip finish the fly. I always do like a four turn whip finish, sometimes five. It's all you really need. Brush everything out. We're just working at building that taper is what we're doing. Again, come in with that Solarez, just all the way around that whip finish. Cure it with the UV light, and I mean it cures so quick. I mean that's that's it. That's cured. That's nice and hard. Especially with their their light, this Solarez light, this thing is super powerful. I mean it cures so quick. I've had some other lights that just don't. All right, so let's go with the next section now. We will place the next section on. Again, make sure that thing is angled down. Then we're just going to close up that loop. So that starts to slide. So then you just come down and then back up. So next we're going to take the next two feathers that we had already pulled off, you can see here, and we're going to pull off the fiber just above the fuzzies. In fact, even if you get one or two fuzzies in there, no big deal. And that will give you a, a wider profile. Now, because that's going to be too much to use, we can come down a little further like this to give us just enough to tie on by pulling out like that. So that's uh, quite a bit more instead of just the tip. I'm going to also cut that. 
and this kind of gets in the way, but let's pull it back like so. Tie that tip in. And then loosely over the front so you don't cut your thread. Stroke all the fibers up and out of the way. Grab the stem with hackle pliers. Pull everything, everything rearward and just start doing the same thing. Start wrapping. So the reason why I'm doing this type of video with this is because I've already done a feather game changer, a mini one, with a regular type video. You know, the shorter ones where I'm not talking at the camera, I'm doing voiceover and stuff, which is quicker. But this gives me the ability to give a little more detail and tell you guys a little bit more, which some of you had said that you wanted. So I figure I've got two types of videos for whoever wants whatever kind of style. Do you want the more detailed, longer video? Because this is long. This is going to be a long video. Um, or do you want the, the shorter one? Um, and so I think it's preference. You know, a lot of people might watch the shorter one and go, oh, I'm going to try that then find it's they need a little more info on something so hopefully this helps so I need to pull off some of those fibers that's just too long there we go there we go don't want to bulk up that head too much Now we're going to pull everything rearward, try not to trap any of the fibers, you want to wrap back up on top. There we go. Sorry if my fingers are in the way guys. Alright. Nope. Nope. Alright, so those stems are a little tougher. Sometimes you just got to come in and trim them off. That's okay. If you overdo that, that can unravel everything and that would be bad. So let's pinch this and move that rearward a little bit out of the eyelet there. And that's plenty of room, I believe, to get moving. But finish pinch trim off and of course solar is good stuff for this fly I'm honestly not sure mine would stay together very well if I didn't have that so so as you can see we're starting to build a taper this section it's it's getting like a teardrop shape and now we're going to go with the larger size shanks so this is fish skulls eight millimeter micro spine you can see it's just slightly longer okay and that's just going to give you it's going to help you with the taper it's going to give you a little more length there so the tail moves a little quicker back and forth but then this will this will give you a little more kind of wobble Get that on there. Even though we tied a little bit up into that eyelet, it still wiggles quite a good, uh, quite a bit. So there's enough room for it to to wobble back and forth there. See how that jumped down? That can happen because that's angled there. So. All right, next we're gonna go with some feathers a little further up. Always grab two right next to each other. So the same thing, I'm looking to see which is bigger, which is smaller. And we start with the one that is finer fiber, okay? This of course is larger than these feathers, stripping from further up. So as you can see, there's the fuzzies way down there. I'm starting up here, okay? So that gives me 
the ability to taper it even more, more pronounced of a taper. Now these are longer shanks, so you can go with a little bit more fiber on these than you would with the six millimeter, since you've got a little more shank that you can, you know, wrap around. So as you can see, it's quite a bit more fiber there. Now technically you don't have to double up these feathers. I do because it gives me a lot more bulk. If these are too thin, then you'll see it, they just don't swim as well. Okay, pull up that fiber, grasp the stem with hackle pliers, stroke everything rearward, and just start making wraps. Again, you're doing touching wraps here. You really don't want to do any open spiral wraps. You want them right on top of the next or the, the previous wrap. So um, what this does, you think, oh man, they're not that durable. Well, they are, because this is a lot of fiber. To get a fish tooth right in there and break off one of these stems would require a lot of force. Uh, it just wouldn't, wouldn't do that. So they tend to be pretty durable, comparably to what you would think, because all this fiber is protecting those stems. Granted, over time, are they possible to unravel? Yeah. I mean, they're not, you know, forever flies, but, but they do last longer than you would think. Maybe not as long as the synthetic versions, but I really like these because they move so well in the water. In fact, they move a little better than the synthetic because you're getting like a double movement. Not only the um, movement of the feather itself, but the whole tail moving with that uh, <clears throat> with those spines. By the way, whenever you whip finish, I've said this before in videos, you always want to whip finish from the back of the head to the front. So that gives you a much cleaner whip finish. So if you're new, rather new to fly tying, then make sure you're whip finishing that way because that will give you, that, that not only makes a stronger whip finish, but it also cleans it up and makes it finer so you're not getting any weird bumps out of there. You can see how nice and clean that whip finish is. So you can see this taper forming. You can see that angle down, okay, and the angle right here up is forming that, that taper, which is what you want. All right, there's the next section. You can see how, how much these move. All righty. So we're going to put another piece in. I'll probably fast forward most of this because... It's the same thing as all the rest. Just one thing I want to mention, like before, you want to pull out closer to the fuzzies further down. So that way you get the longer fibers and you're building that taper a little more aggressively. There we go. That is the entire tail section. Moves really well. And all these fibers move in the water when you're, you know, even without the tail moving, the tail's going to move as well. But each one of these fibers move as well. So, all right, let's go ahead with uh, the hook. Now, I would have tied quite a few of the tails first before moving on, but since I'm only tying one, then we'll move on. But usually I'll get a whole bunch of tails done and then, and then we can move, uh, you know, then I, I, I do this in steps basically, and it makes it a lot quicker. So we're gonna go back to that stronger thread. And just white is fine. You could use the gray, it doesn't really matter. So I'm using the Vivas 140. 
we'll just start the, the thread. It doesn't have to be right up by the, the hook eye. We're just gonna bring it back, cut the thread off, come back up a wrap or two to just a little bit, you know, back from the hook point there. And then we're gonna use this wire to attach it. Now there's a couple different types of things that you could use to attach. You could even use mono if you wanted. I find that not as strong, but this is a uh, Senyo's thin intruder wire, uh, trailer wire. So it works really well. Um, for this smaller size, I use the sizes six or smaller, even though there's a size four hook. The six works just fine. I'm gonna cut off a section. You can see the length of this here. This should tie about five of these. And we are gonna start it so it's directly right on top. Pull it back a little bit. You can see we've got a little tag in there. Let's see if I can get the light in closer. There we go. So you, that your thread is back a little ways. Bend that backward like so. Make a wrap over it. Now watch out because it is sharp. Okay, when you cut it with uh, wire cutters. All right. So then you're left with this. So here's the tail. We'll thread the wire through the, the eye, okay? You can see we're leaving a little loop there. We'll pull this up forward. We're gonna make a couple wraps. Four or five is fine. We're gonna look at it like this. Now you want to close up that loop a little bit so you can pull it to adjust it. You can pull it out if you made it too, too uh, tight but you want this to be directly on top, okay? So now that you've got that, you can pull back this section, tighten that, and then you always wanna use wire cutters, never use your good scissors. Cut that off tight, or close, I mean. And we're just gonna come back through be a little loose over top of that wire there so that way you don't cut your thread. We're gonna make sure this is directly up and down, like so, because you don't want this to be turning sideways. You want that to be directly up and down, okay? We're not gonna close that off too much. You still want a lot of wiggle, but if it's too, you know, if you if you do close it um, too much, it's not gonna wiggle. If you don't close it enough though, it will come back and foul on the hook. So you wanna just make sure that this wiggles might be a little too tight right there. All right. And then bring it back up. We're gonna two or three turn whip finish. Doesn't really matter because you're gonna come back over that again. There we go. That's attached. We wanna wipe a little super glue over that and that's gonna just harden that thread and keep that, you know, there. It's not gonna it's not going to pull out because we doubled it over and everything, but that just hardens the thread. So when this is wiggling around, it's not moving that and then loosening that thread. So it just hardens the, the thread in there. So let's put this aside and let that dry, that super glue. And this is where I would have, you know, I, I would attach five more of those. And then by the time I was done attaching, then the first one would be dry and I can move forward. I switched threads already. I'm back to the 6 aught Viva 6 aught We're just going to start it anywhere. It doesn't really matter. Tie back to just before <clears throat> the loop there. And then I did something different here. So I want to make the head a little darker than the tail section. So I have a dark gray feather under a lighter gray feather. And I stripped off all the fuzzies, pulling out, pulling off just the top portion there, cutting that off so I can tie this in. You don't have to do this. You could tie the whole thing in the same color, but you can change up the head um, colors if you want. I mean, you could do this in just one color. If you want to make the head red, you could do that. Um, you want to keep it the same color? Do that. It's all, it's all up to you. 
So we are going to start wrapping this up. Now, this is not going to completely take up the entire head here. So we are going to need more feathers. And as you can see, these take so long to tie. Um, <clears throat> it's almost like tying like five flies at the same time, <laughs> maybe six. Um, so, you know, I, I charge a lot when I'm tying these because they do take so long. Um, and there's a lot of materials. Uh, this is a lot of material, um, a lot of feathers, and feathers are not cheap. So just the cost, I figured, cost me at least six dollars okay all right so there it's starting to be a little darker now i'm going to need uh two more and by the way these are going to be up towards the top like the largest size feathers on this um you're just kind of trying to taper it as you go so you're going with uh smallest to you know smallest back here to largest feather um these are the largest so keep that in mind when you're pulling off the feathers for the back, uh, the front section here, you want to find the. When I say largest, I don't mean longest feather total. Um, <clears throat> I just mean the longest fibers. So I'll show you what I mean in a second. So I don't mean the longest like this. What I mean is where the fibers are that they're sticking out the farthest. And that, that is a difference. Some of the feathers um, can be longer, but don't necessarily have <clears throat> longer fiber. So you want to keep that in consideration here when selecting each feather as you go up. Once you get to the head here, you want to be a little more particular on any of those trap fibers because you're going to see it quite a bit. All right, so I have way more. So I messed that up, guys. All right, so I had way too much feather to tie in. And I didn't want to bulk up the head too much. You want a little bulkiness right up by the head. Kind of, you know, really close touching wraps right here, but if it's too bulky, then you're going to have trouble whip finishing and having it not get into the eye. So, because we are going to add some eyes here in just a second. All right, so you capture that. Even at the front, you just want to kind of wind back up onto it. Cut those off close. And now you can add, you can whip finish here if you want, and add 3D eyes, but I've got this little cape of jungle cock, and it's a, it's a really good type of feather to add eyes with, and you'll see in a second. All right, so this is the jungle cock feather. Now you want to prepare it. It's a little tricky, and this is not a really high-end one, so it's actually trickier. <laughs> but um, I'm going to pull off some of the feathers, and then you're left with basically an eye, and you can tie it in right there. <clears throat> I'm going to pull off a few more. And it wants to split like that. The higher end ones will not, but that's okay. It's still going to do the same thing. There's ways to keep it from splitting and uh, like UV resin and stuff. And honestly, you know, it's up to you. If you want to do all that, you're welcome to it. I don't. Because um, when I fish these, going to get messed up anyway after a fish strike or two and they still catch fish you really don't even need to add eyes if 
you don't want. And it looks nice. So then you pull those back. Like so. You can come in, trim those off close. Oh, boy. Got myself good, guys. <laughs> oh, yeah. Gotta be careful. We're dealing with hooks. So, now that you're done, you can go ahead and whip finish. And then you want to take a brush. Brush this forward a little bit. Untrap some of the fibers on the head here. On the back. Like so. And then use... The UV resin, Solar Res Ultra Thin. You can finish up that head there. And there we have it, the finished product. Now, as you notice, the fibers are actually not longer on this one. They are on the, the previous one. So that kind of stepped up a little different, but that's okay. Just means the head is more tapered at the front, which is fine. Um, you can see as this goes down, there is a, a taper. You know, if you if you had even finer f uh, feathers up here and tapered a little more, you can get a nicer profile, but it still works. Works great. Well, there we have it, guys. The finished game changer, feathered game changer. This one's the, the mini size, so smaller. These are about two and a half inches. They work great. Um, they catch a wide range of different fish from trout to bass to even large sunfish and uh, crappie and stuff like that. Um, even in salt water, these work really well. So if you're fishing for a fish that is eating small little bait fish, then this will work wonders. Give it a try to tie, try and tie it. If you have trouble, but you want to get some, if you have trouble tying them, they are a little more difficult. So you can always uh, just contact me, let me know. I do sell flies. so. Just let me know and I'm happy to tie some up for you. I do charge quite a bit for these because they take so long, but I, I sell other flies as well. Um, these are my most expensive fly, so uh, I believe right around $19 each. Or you can get, uh, I think, I want to say it's uh, $94.99, maybe $89.99. I'm forgetting my prices. I have them written down, but um, uh, for five of them, if you wanted five, it would be that price. So definitely let me know. I'm happy to tie them for you. Also, check out my sponsor, Risen Fly. They make rods, reels, flies. They even sell flies. They sell um, materials. Uh, they sell a bunch of different stuff for fly fishing. So check them out. Really great prices already, but they're they're offering all of you guys a discount. So type in McFly at checkout for 15% off of anything you buy at their shop. You really will be happy with them, guys. I, I don't like having sponsors that I don't believe in and I really believe in their products. They're really good stuff. Um, everything that they have is high, high quality. So check them out. Plus they have a great warranty. They stand by their product. Hard to beat them. So check them out. Uh, www.risenfly.com. Well, I will see you guys in the next video. Now you go catch some fish.